Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Oregon Explore. I am your host, Owen Sammons, and today my guest is Philip Morgan, and he is the director of music here at Central Presbyterian Church in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. So as usual, pour your favorite beverage, pull up a comfy chair, and get ready for this episode of Oregon Explore. Central Presbyterian Church sits on the corner of 4th Avenue and Kentucky Street in downtown Louisville. Central is dear to my heart, as I had the pleasure of being the organist here for a few years sometime prior to the pandemic. The organ here is a rather large vintage E.M. Skinner organ that includes most of Skinner's famous stops. It's been completely restored to original voicing and specification by Pete Weber. It is one of the few large, functioning, unaltered Skinners in the entire world. I'm here at the console with Philip. So tell me, uh, what's going on here? Uh, this is a 1930 Skinner, um, 40 ranks. Um, an incredible gift to this uh, congregation in 1930 made by um, a former member who had moved to Boston and married a rich heiress who died. And so he was left with lots of money and decided to gift his uh, family's church with this wonderful organ. What uh, a fantastic way to spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's a treasure of organs in Louisville and I would say in you know the entire country. Yeah. Um, it's 
Uh, there's so much to describe here. Uh, where would you like to start? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, so tell me, what do you really like about this instrument? What, what comes in handy? What is really unpleasant? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it is a loud instrument, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it is a soft instrument. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find some in-between. Um, you know, we should also say that you were organist here for like a year and a half, two years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you actually know this instrument far better than I do. I'm director of music here, but not necessarily the organist. Um, I play it some. No, and you play it well. The, 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 you're right on the money. It is, uh, there, it's hard to find something in between, um, but what it has is so rich. Yes, uh, and it's full of colors, so I mean, we'll just start with some of these wonderful solo stops All right. in the choir. Uh, the clarinet is probably my favorite. The English horn is also beautiful. It's a little softer. Notice I had to play that a third up because the C is out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and you know, that happens, that happens. Uh, it, trumpet on every division accessible to every division of the organ. Uh, and it packs a pretty big punch too. So these <laughs> I love it. incredible sounds on every division, the French horn in the great. Uh, there's not much else interesting in the great. There's a couple of great <laughs> big diapasons that can uh, be a little unwieldy sometimes. Sure, sure. Um, that's the first diapason, and then here's the second. Together, which puts out a lot of sound it really uh, does. all by itself. It really does. Um, so, you know, for some standard hymn singing. lot of sound. So it's I've just thrilling. pulled four stops on the grate uh, and nothing else is turned on. So you can imagine that <laughs> once you actually start adding lots of color from the swell and the choir. Um, it's a ride. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I don't hear my congregation singing. Uh, um, speaking of the swell, there's a lot of uh, Fun things that, as a former Baptist, uh, excite me. Okay, all right. A lot of these celest, the celestial. So if I couple all of that with a clarinet. Ultra call music. That's um, lovely. Well, and it just, it really is. It has such a, just a, an approachable uh, sound to it. Those strings, what, and the, so those strings are uh, both present and just so rich and not in any way biting at the same time. I really like to use the the flute and the string together just by themselves. I, for uh, accompanying the choir, it was yep. always really helpful. So the eight foot flute and the eight foot string, uh, sometimes the four foot flute. Oh yeah, that's nice. Um, but that's a, often a big combination. But also on the swell is this carnopian. Mm -hmm. uh, and a four foot clarion. Yeah, I didn't even know that was out because <laughs> I rarely use that. No worries. Uh, and the oboe. Uh, 
Um, I love that oboe. It's a great solo stop too. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, because it's on the swell, <laughs> trying to accompany it at the same time becomes a little tricky. <laughs> um, so maybe something like this happens. Nice. Has a lot of character. Uh, uh, oh, then there's the echo. Mm -hmm. uh, a Vox Humana, an Una Madris, and a um, chimney flute. Uh, the flute is badly out of tune. <laughs> but all of that together sounds like, and it gets used approximately once a year by me. Okay. Did you ever use it much? I, I snuck it in a lot. Yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult to do, but... Uh, it is. It is. Yeah, I tell you the only time I cheesily use it is, uh, oh, I think it's the second or third verse of A Little Town of Bethlehem, How Silently, How Silently. Suddenly everything switches to the echo and everybody looks backwards like, oh, where did the sound come from? <laughs> uh, maybe. Got a pretty wide funeral home sound. <laughs> well, yeah, those those Skinner boxes, there's one in the back, one in the front, and they are generous. <laughs> I think if you ever want to make sure I'm really dead, play those stops together. <laughs> and if I don't begin to twitch. <laughs> I have to ask about the pedal. It's, it's a really fun pedal division um, in that you have... A trombone and a trombone. You have all this heft down there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> playing Coom Ronda becomes very fun. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, what if I turn all of this on here? I mean, matched against the heft of this of the whole thing. It's it's oddly balanced. I mean it still sticks out. But it it, it does it does kind of balance. Um, yeah, if you're playing uh, you know, rep, it sounds fantastic. So do you ever use the quint? Um, so in the pedal, I have never turned it on. Okay, so what I understand is that so the resultant is taking uh, the board on and, and just adding another fifth below it or above it or something. So the quint, if I'm not mistaken, is taking one of the diapason pipes and adding, so that it's making a resultant of the diapasons. I think that's how it works, but it's, it's so weird. But well, we'll try it. Yeah. The 32 is soft, but it yeah. And some notes, adds something. Some notes are perfectly convincing, like it works together perfectly. And then some are just like, no, I can hear two pipes. Yeah, um, yeah. I love it. <laughs> the choir's actually got this uh, gamba and dulciana, and that with the flute is also very nice. Nice. Do a lot of sound very quickly. Yeah. Well, that concert flute too is almost like a small uh, French horn. It has such a round sound and then yeah. the base of it. Um, 
And then adding even the four foot harmonic loop. Once again, incredibly lucky to have this instrument here. I know that there are like some churches not much smaller than this sanctuary that that's the entire organ, like the five stops I just pulled. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I, I can attest. <laughs> I felt Cesar Franck's first chorale was an excellent vehicle to show off the breadth of this instrument. The great diapasons are the first stops you hear against a modest registration in the swell that includes the oboe. Here you can see the great first diapason and the great chamber. The swell vox humana is featured in the next section.
In this section, the great principal flute accompanies the choir clarinet, one of Skinner's most famous and most successful stops. In the next section, all celestes and all vox humana ranks are engaged at eight foot and four foot pitch. All tremulants are engaged as well.
As the swell Cornopian sings this haunting tune, we'll tour the pipework that I could manage to access.
To finish up the episode, we'll walk across the hall to the beautiful chapel at Central Presbyterian. This wonderful acoustical space is outfitted with a two-rank instrument by Michigan-based Lauk Pipe Organ Company. This is a mechanical or tracker action instrument, somewhat similar to the organ in our first episode in Paris, Kentucky. Pete Weber was gracious enough to come out and tune this beautiful instrument for my visit. Thanks, Pete. Our final musical offering is a brief meditation on the hymn tune, Love Unknown. Please enjoy. (laughs) 